today's episode, very excitingly, I am going to show how you can bring the life back into items of jewelry that may have been sitting in your jewelry box just unenjoyed. And little did you realize that these are fixes you can do yourself very simply. All you needed to do was to be shown a little instruction. I think you're going to find this very educational, enjoyable, and save you money and time as well. How many of you have a pair of earrings or just the earrings backs to themselves that are sitting in your jewelry box totally not usable in your mind because of one simple thing. The back is too loose. It slides off the post. You're afraid you're going to lose that favorite earring. Rightfully so, you should be. Well, little did you know that just with a little instruction and a few moments of your time, we can bring that back back to life and those pair of earrings back in your ear to where you should be enjoying them as they were meant to be. All right, so here we have two representations of common earrings that are worn. Heavier dangle type ones that require a little bit tighter fit and your standard classic studs. Well, I have a series of three different backs, one in rose gold of a smaller size, one in white gold of a larger size, and one in silver. Now, I'm going to demonstrate exactly what many of you ladies have discovered, that the backs will just slide off way too easily and not have a friction against them. They're called, remember, friction posts. And what will happen is, in no time at all, that back will just fall right off. And you wondered what happened. You think it's something defective. No, it is something called metal fatigue. But it is something also that standardly is adjustable. And if you go to your jeweler, yes, he'll take it in. Yes, he'll charge you uh, seemingly uh, some of money that little did you know it was something you could do all along. Ladies, many of you may not realize it, but a pair of pliers that you might have had for some time, whether you're doing floral work, whether you're doing little beading work from some days past, are exactly the first choice tool. And that's a round nose pair of pliers that you see here. Not totally necessary by any means, but if you happen to have a round nose pair of pliers, it is the primary pair of pliers that we all use to create jump rings. The little round rings that you see that connect a clasp to a chain. Now, we're gonna get these out of the way because okay, if you have them, those are the first choice, but these are what everybody has, and those are called needle nose pliers. They come in different uh, lengths, different widths, but if you have them, most of the time they're the smaller version of it. And we're going to show you exactly all you need to do if you have that pair of pliers is simple technique to tighten that pair of friction posts. What you thought was a broken earring back and what your jeweler could charge you money for a brand new one is a matter of putting it in your needle nose pliers as you see or at any other angle. Now, normally I would get my other fingers involved in holding this piece, but then you wouldn't be able to see the shot and exactly what we're trying to do. So at home, you can put your finger underneath and grab it with your other ones to secure it and then either way you want to take your needle nose pliers and from either side of the outside of those rolled pieces of metal you want to slowly apply pressure as you see and as you see them closing in to the desired point. Now you can oftentimes what you want to do is bend them in until they touch and it may take a couple of attempts and it may take rolling the metal in a little bit as well. But the end result, you're going to want the distance between those two pieces of metal to be narrower than the thickness of the post. Now, most posts are 22 gauge. 
but they do get as thick as 20 and 18 gauge if you're talking about items often from uh, India and um, those areas. They tend to have larger gauged holes in their ear. And as you can see now, I have closed in those sides. Now, let's see what that does for that post and friction. As you can see, yeah, I cannot push it. It just does not fall through. I have to apply pressure to the piece and boom. Thereby, when I tip it upside down before it just fell out, and now you have a very secure back. And now that you know how to do that part, you can adjust the tension yourself so that you can make it tighter on the post, depending on the way you pull it in and out. You can feel how tight it is. And to loosen it, if you went too tight, it's a simple matter. Hold the base of the earring with the post on it. Take, or you can actually hold it in your hand. Take your pliers and put them through the holes just like that and slowly open them up. And you can therefore decrease the tension if you made it too tight. But do not tight, try to tighten it with the post in there. You need the post out of the hole and then apply the pressure. Here's me doing it from the inside instead of the outside, which is possible as well. Whatever works better. Now, let me show you how you can turn a ring that you haven't been able to enjoy or may not be a ring that is sizable due to the way it is made or due to the antique nature of it. And we're, I'm going to show you just how easy that might be able to be made enjoyable as well. These are um, ring guards. They call them different names, but they can actually be purchased at your hobby store. Uh, the one that begins with an M, the big one, it has all kinds of things like that. And they're no different of any less quality than you would get at your jewelers. They're certainly not very expensive either. It is the process of putting them on is what the jeweler charges for. It takes time and rightfully their time should be covered. But this is something that usually they're sold several to a pack. They're not going to be but, you know, really cents or a dollar each. If you, it takes one or two for you to practice and get it right, you're still going to be saving money. Now, they come in a couple of different sizes. We have two of them demonstrated here and two different styles depending on exactly what kind of ring you're doing. The wider one with the under supports like that, this is one of my personal rings, is what you would use for something with a wider shank. You have to have a different type of tab to be able to cover that width and distance. That's what this type is made for. The other kind is made for your kind of classic solitaires or your ones with the narrower shank. They come in two different sizes for the slight differences in width or the differences in the finger size. Here's the ring. Here is the uh, ring guard, so to speak, that we're going to use. Now, you can see that it is not going to fit in there with the way it's curved. So the first thing you want to do, and I've gone ahead and pre-bent this because all I did was use my fingers. This metal is a base metal. It is made to be malleable. It is made, in other words, to be molded and bent. So I have put a curve in there that allows me to put the piece inside, as you can see, the ring. Now, we've got it inside the ring. Let me turn it from this other angle and show you, and then we'll get it, whoops, we'll get it a little straightened out. Uh, so you can see that you want the tabs of metal to be even on both sides, and you want it to be centered as well. Now, it's a work as you, in progress as you go, but you can make adjustments along the way. So, you want those to be even 
then let me turn it. You want it to be centered. In other words, you want those tabs to come to the same place on either end. Now, what we're going to do is just to lock it in place, we're going to do a quick, easy fold over of two of them. All right, so we've bent two of those tabs around. Now let's go back and complete evening this piece out. And it uh, becomes just a matter of folding the other section of the tab over that, that we did not earlier. I would shorten these normally but what I'm doing like on this one is I'm going to make one actually larger than the other so it actually folds over the piece so here let me show you so I'm going to go ahead and fold that down and apply pressure to it so that it is snug against the metal and then by this one being a little bit longer it will make sure that it tucks well over and wraps around it. It creates, being off to the side, less of the possibility of it um, snagging and whatnot. And that's where also it comes into play if you have the ability to take off any sharp edges. Now I'll show you a trick, ladies, that will help you be able to do that very effectively. All right, so now let's look at this side. You can see we have the two tabs. They've been temporarily pushed into place very tightly. So let's go ahead, we fold the shorter one. And you can make them the same length. I just like to kind of not have them off uh, center a little bit. It allows me to be able to get a better and tighter, cleaner finish. You can put this on a mandrel, on a ring mandrel, but how many of you have one of those? N not many. So that's, as a goldsmith, maybe a little advantage there. But again, let's take the same needle nose pliers or your finger, depending on how strong, and you can push that down. I just pushed it down to where I just uh, made it about a half a size bigger and you can go ahead and continue that process with a tool to where you get it to where it's comfortable for you. Same technique applies whether it's that one or this style and that is first you can see you have to bend the tab so that it fits on the inside curve. So I've gone ahead and pre-bent one, as you can see, so that it does uh, fit inside because we'll do the rest later. So what you do is you just apply it as simply as that. You can see the tabs are out there like that. And just do kind of a quick pre-folding of that tab. You can do it just with your finger. Now these are extra long. And if, uh, you know, you don't have to cut them off, but if you have the tool and then, let me tell you ladies, here is the thing you can use. If you have sharp places, uh, there's a great, great little miniature tool. Now don't get carried away and replace me as your driller because of it. You know what it is? It is that little, little, little motor for, uh, I think it's uh, for cuticles or for um, sanding your feet. But those little bits, and oftentimes, ladies, they are diamond tools even, of different grits and their little polishing wheels. Those will be very effective to remove the sharp places only on the ring guard. Now, it comes with a little warning. Don't take those little tools and hit it against your actual ring if it's a sensitive place. In other words, a place with a design or something. Because yeah, metal, if you're gonna um, remove a nub of, on this metal, it'll remove something on your um, 
platinum or gold ring as well. But if there's something really sharp and bothering you, do not get it up near anywhere near stone. So don't get carried away. We're only talking about this non-precious metal piece. If in you're working on it, you get that uh, situation. Okay, so here we have it. We pre-bent um, the pieces a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and complete the folding of them around the shank and then center it at a, uh, at a point when we have it locked in tight enough. And I'm still doing this by hand. And when I get it kind of wrapped around far enough, then we're going to bring in the tools. Okay, so now this one folded down. All right, now here we have the bar and I'm going to show you how it's adjusted from there. Now let's go ahead and complete the wrapping of it and with just the needle nose pliers you kind of roll it around so that you get the tightest fit and by that I mean grab, do not touch the shank with the tool. The only contact you should be making is the tool against the non-precious metal ring guard that you put on. And remember, if you totally scratch up the ring guard, just start over. Bend the pieces back, get another one. It's only cents or dollar compared to any other um, nicks or anything you might put on your real ring. But it is really a quite simple process. Do not be afraid of it because it is, if you're handy at all, it can be done as quickly as we're showing you actually much much quicker because we're doing this in a demonstration purpose so actually giving away my little uh, uh hints and secrets here but i'm uh, want your jewelry to be uh, something that is user friendly and something that if you can do a quick easy fix to get it back on your hand because remember you're the best advertiser for the amazing items and so if we can get it back on your hand quickly and easily, then you will continue to be our best advertiser. So we just roll that piece of metal around the bottom of the shank. Now, this could have been a little, um, for a little bit thicker shank, but it all is uh, same technique and demonstration purposes. I'm kind of working this at an odd angle as well, just so that you can see it. We've installed it in this, and remember, they make different sizes, and for as inexpensive as they are, if you're not sure what size to get, get a couple of them so that you can try uh, to see which one works the best. You have a lot of choices. They make a lot of those little uh, pieces that fold over longer than needed. If you can, trim them back. I told you, a, uh, you know, and to cut them short, you just take a pair of uh, wire snips, work fine. And I told you how to trim them back. If not, just keep folding them around. Now, in this particular ring, okay, so let's say the client had an issue with a knuckle that was bigger than the back part of the ring. Well, you can leave not only a little extra when you fold those over. And if you do that, watch what happens you will get a spring effect in the piece in other words when it goes over the knuckle it springs down and once behind it springs back up a very inexpensive method of arthritic control or just when you have a big knuckle i'm facing now that as i get older okay so we have just covered how you can self tighten friction posts without going to your jeweler or without having to buy a new one so many times there you're sold a new one and um, nothing is needed also once you get to messing with them if you see the little side pieces of metal not lined up you can just bend it until they are lined up the little notch at the end of the post if you ever thought that that was a uh, a needed part no that is the final basic little uh, part that is a safety to the post because as it goes right out the end the way the posts are designed with the hollow part it 
catches it in that spot. So you want that little notch to be in the post. It's very functional. So there you have it. Pair of needle nose pliers and a few moments of your time and a little bit of confidence will make you a, uh, able to wear those items of jewelry that you maybe you didn't for years or wouldn't you look like the hero if you went over to a family member's home and fixed the jewelry as well. The inside little ring guards, I told you where to get them and they are easily put on yourself. If in any doubt, then go to someone that maybe is a little handier, but either way, you can save a lot of money and also convert items back into jewelry that you can enjoy and wear once again like you're supposed to. So, I hope you've gotten something out of this. Another very, always for me, fun and exciting episode of the How Do You series. And in today's series, I showed you how you can fix earrings and rings that weren't usable before. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.